Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his family, his companions, and all those that follow the right path until the day of resurrection. If we go by the words of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then we would say, today is worse than yesterday and tomorrow will be worse than today rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says every day that passes as we move towards yawmul qiyama or the day of resurrection is worse than the day that passed yesterday the time of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the companions was the best of times but every day that takes us away from that period of time the time of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam becomes worse yaqulu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in a hadith khayrun nasi qarni the best people are those of my generation ثم الذين يلونهم then those that follow them those that come after them ثم الذين يلونهم then those that come after them as we move away from the period of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we keep getting worse and worse i want today to talk about fitna the majority of us have not understood the meaning of the word fitna Usually when the word fitna is spoken, the majority of us understand quarreling and fighting, but fitna is much deeper than that. Fitna is not just quarrels. Fitna is not just fights. Fitna is any form of trial that's going to cause a man to lose his faith to lose his iman or to be driven away from his deen. Any such thing is called fitna. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Quran, فَإِنَّكُمْ وَمَا تَعْبُدُونَ مَا أَنْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ بِفَاتِنِينَ He uses the word fitna. فَإِنَّكُمْ وَمَا تَعْبُدُونَ You and the things that you worship, addressing the idol worshippers. مَا أَنْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ بِفَاتِنِينَ You cannot cause fitna to any person who believes. You cannot cause them to lose their faith so that they stop believing in Allah in order to start believing in the idols because logically it doesn't make sense that a person would stop believing in Allah and start believing in the idols illa man huwa salil jahim except a person for whom uh, Jahannam has been written maybe such a person you might cause fitna and drive them from the true religion to bring them to the religion of the idols but in reality ma antum alayhi bifatinin you can't cause anyone any form of fitna and every generation has had its fitna every generation has fitna and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says the greatest fitna of my generation is money wealth obviously this does not go contrary to the hadith of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he says the fitna of this ummah is in women we say when he speaks about women sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he specifically means fitna that applies to men the greatest fitna with men is women and when he speaks about money sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he means this is general fitna for everyone for men and women and children money is fitna and this ummah has several other trials especially for anyone who's a believer once you believe fitna comes your way fitna to try and draw you away from your religion alif la mim 
ahasiban nasu an yutraku an yaqulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun wa laqad fatanna alladhina min qablihim alif lam mim do the people think that they will be left to say we are believers wa hum la yuftanun and yet allah does not give them fitna وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ We gave fitna to those before them. So fitna for this ummah is a sure thing. Allah has to try us. But our fitna might be different from the fitna of the people before us. Those before us face trials. Rasulullah wasallam says, Those before you would be cut into two. They bring a soul and cut a man into two asking him to leave his religion and he would be patient in the face of this fitna he would not leave his religion but you have ajala you want things in a hurry there is no patience in you this was a kind of fitna and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has spoken about fitna where he says qutila ashabul ukhdud النار ذات الوقود إذ هم عليها قعود وهم على ما يفعلون بالمؤمنين شهود وما نقموا منهم إلا أن يؤمنوا بالله العزيز الحميد. This is fitna to those before us. They threw them in the fire. النار ذات الوقود. A fire, what was the problem? Their only mistake was to believe in Allah and that fitna came to them. Alhamdulillah, today such fitna is, is rare. No one is coming to our mosques, alhamdulillah, to try and kill us, asking us to abandon Islam. No one is throwing us in the fire. Such things, alhamdulillah, are not happening to the majority of the Muslims. I'm not saying no one is undergoing such fitna. Some people might be experiencing that kind of fitna, but such fitna is rare. And my question to you is, do you think there is no fitna? This day, our day, is supposed to be worse than the day of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if no one is killing us, no one is throwing us in the fire, no one is cutting us into two in order for us to abandon our religion, do you feel there is no fitna? You think there's no fitna? The fitna is that. But the fitna has come in a different form. As the Messenger wasallam, has already informed us. There are a number of fitnas that we face today and I will mention maybe four in this muhadara and proceed in the next mahadara insha'Allah ta'ala in the uh, next khutbah. I want to talk about the fitna of women, the fitna of money, the fitna of ourselves. وَجَعَلْنَا بَعْضَكُمْ لِبَعْضٍ fitna. We are fitna to each other. Let me speak about three. The fitna of women, the fitna of money, and the fitna that comes from ourselves. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Fattakud dunya, you should fear the world. Wattakun nisa, and you should fear the women. Fa inna awwal fitna, because the first fitna. في بني إسرائيل in the children of Israel كانت في النساء was in women our generation with the advancement in science and technology this fitna has become much easier for us the people of Shahwat call us to this fitna in order for us to fall in the fitna. Wallahu yuridu ayyatuba alaykum. Allah wants to forgive you. Allah wants you to repent so that He can forgive you. 
ويريد الذين يتبعون الشهوات أن تميلوا ميلا عظيما As for those who follow their desires they want you to deviate completely There's a sahabi of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who says at the age of 80 I'm 80 years old. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken away my desire for women. I don't, I don't desire women anymore. I, I don't have it in me. You know, when you grow older, that desire just, just dies. But he says, despite that, I'm afraid of being alone with a woman. I, I can't touch a woman. Allah has taken that from me. I mean, I'm, I'm too old, 80, maybe above, I can't touch a woman. But still, I'm afraid of being found in a place alone with a woman. Because what shaitan is going to do is, he might activate me for that particular moment only. In order to make me fall into fitna. And once I fall into fitna, I get back to what I was. And that's possible. Ma'asuya sometimes is made easy by shaitan. Shaitan yuzayin. La uzayin anna lahum fil ard. I'm going to decorate for them the things of the world. La uzayin anna lahum fil ard. I'm going to decorate ma'asuya for them, disobedience, so that they fall into the ma'asuya. And when such fitna becomes rampant in the society, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends punishments. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, you will see diseases that never existed in the people before you. And this we have seen. There are many diseases that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has sent as a result of zina. People falling into this fitna. And this fitna drives you away from deen. I said for it to be called fitna, it must be something that drives you away from deen. Tell me, when a man makes zina, is his iman the same? Do you expect him to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he ought to obey Allah? Do you think a person would make zina and wake up in the night and pray tahajjud? You think a person would make zina and still pray five times a day and make the nawafil and read Quran? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La yazni zani hina yazni wa huwa mu'min. The one who makes zina is not a believer the moment he makes zina. The iman is, is not in him. This zina takes away your iman. And when it takes away your iman, it creates fitna for you to drive you away from your deen. In the same way that beer, gambling, drives away people from deen, zina also drives people away from deen. إِنَّمَا الْخَمْرُ وَالْمَيْسِرُ وَالْأَنصَابُ وَالْأَزْلَامُ وَلَنْصَابُ وَلَزْلَمُ رِجِسٌ مِّنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ فَاجْتَنِبُوهُ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَنْ يُوْقِعَ بَيْنَكُمُ الْعَدَاوَةَ وَالْبَغْضَاءَ والبغضاء في الخمر والميسر ويصدكم That's the point, الشاهد ويصدكم عن ذكر الله وعن الصلاة فهل أنتم منتهون Beer and gambling and divination by arrows. Rijisum min amali shaitan. This is the handiwork of shaitan. Fajitanibu who stay away from them. La'allakum tuflihun if you want to prosper. Innama yuridu shaitan what shaitan wants. An yuqi'a baynakum al-adawa is to create enmity between you. Fil khamr through bia. Wal maisir and gambling. Wa yasuddakum an dhikrillah. 
and because of disobedience you will not remember Allah you will be far away from the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa'ani salah and you will be far away from salah fahal antum muntahun will you stop disobeying Allah drives you away from dhikr disobeying Allah drives you away from salah disobeying Allah takes away the khushu' in your salah we all pray we stand before Allah but few people feel like they are really standing in the presence of Allah their heart is full of disobedience and when they stand in salah they they don't feel they are in front of Allah there's no khushu' in their hearts this is a result of ma'asiyah and this is fitna Khushur comes in salah when you stay away from zina. Stay away from bad pictures. Don't look at things Allah has forbidden. When you do that, there's no khushur in your salah. No man, and I give you a guarantee, no man would make zina and stand in salah and have khushur. It's not possible. You can't from zina and you stand in salah and there is 100% khushu' in your salah, you get 1%, 2%, maybe zero out of your salah because of the ma'asiyah, the disobedience that engulfs your heart. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke about money as being fitna. And what a fitna it is. It is a big fitna. We're in the masjid today, and if you look around, the people you recognize to be millionaires are nowhere near the masjid. They're not here. The majority of us, maybe there are a few, I don't know, but the majority of us are those who are struggling. That's why we are in the masjid and that's why we sit and make dhikr and that's why we're here five times a day. The moment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a million or two or three, you will disappear from the masjid. Not everyone, but the majority of us would disappear from the masjid because money is a fitna. Allah has given wealth and they remained with their iman. Even today, we, we see it. The moment Allah brings no business in your, in your life, you know, there's, there's no business, things are difficult. The best place to be is probably the, the mosque every, every time. But the moment a customer appears, he has some, some diamonds, right? He has some diamonds and there's some negotiations and you need to go to uh, such and such a place. Most of the time, for that period of the time when the business is occurring, we won't see you in the masjid. You're always, if not in Solwezi, you're in Dola. If not in Dola, you need to meet the clients in Lusaka. If you're not meeting clients in Lusaka, you also, it's, it becomes like that. Just for a few days, just the moment a customer appears. When there's no customer, Alhamdulillah, you're around every time. The moment one comes and there's some, some gold to buy or some diamonds to buy, suddenly you become very, very busy. We need to meet our partners in Dola. We need to meet partners. In, it is fitna. We haven't realized it. I said other umam had different types of fitna. Our fitna is this. But the problem is we haven't recognized the fitna and everyone is busy asking for that fitna. Who, who doesn't want money? Despite everything we're explaining about money. We're saying money is going to make you miss salah, money is going to make you do this and so on, but who, at the end of the day, who doesn't want it? Everyone still wants it, right? Even if it's fitna, there's a no problem, Allah, try me with that fitna. Let's see if I would uh, uh, fall into that, that temptation. No one would say, I, I want to avoid this fitna, therefore money should not come my way. But it is a trial. Remember the story of uh, the three from among the children of Israel, the blind man and, and the one who had leprosy and uh, uh, the one who had hair falling off his, his head. They were poor people, afflicted by diseases, and the angel appeared to them in the form of, of a man, and he asked them what they wanted in their lives. One wanted a camel, another one wanted a cow, the other one wanted sheep. All right, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the first one camels and the camels multiplied until he had a valley full of camels. The other one who had cows had many cows, he had a valley full of cows and the one who wanted sheep had a valley full of sheep. He gave them money, right? But money is fitna. After giving them money, he has to try them. Each time you get money, Allah has to try you because money is fitna. Each time you get it, you have to be tried. So Allah sends an angel to them in the form of, of a poor man. And he asks them, sorry, I'm a poor man. I'm going to such and such a place and I'm asking you for, for a camel that can uh, uh, get me to my destination. Uh, the same angel went, into the, I mean, went to the one who had the cows and the one who had the sheep. And you know, when a person, when a person gets rich, it's like the rich people agreed on, on what answers to give the poor people. Usually you get the same answers. They're nice, well-rehearsed answers. Nowadays you hear things like, ah, to tell you the truth, um, uh, things are not selling. We, we have items but no one, is, no one is buying. Things are very, very difficult. Sorry. Or oh, ah, the economy is not favoring us. The economy is very, very difficult. Al-huququ kathir. That's, that's what they said. Al-huququ kathira. We have too many responsibilities. There are so many things we need to take care of and so on. Except the blind man, the one who was given the ship. And in the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah simply wanted to try you. Because money is fitna, we will be tried. When you're given money, Allah gives it to you because he wants to try you. It's a fitna. And everyone gets an opportunity. That's the funny part of it. When you look around, everyone has an opportunity. Everyone looks back on a day when he says, ah, those days, things were nice for me. They were very, very good. And now, well, not so good. That was your opportunity and your trial is probably over. It depends on how you responded to that, to that trial. So money is fitna. And I said the third type of fitna is fitna against ourselves. I'm a fitna to you and you are fitna to me. A poor man is fitna to a rich man. And a rich man is fitna to a poor man. How's that? When the rich man looks at the poor man, he thinks he is above him. More elevated in status. He doesn't consider him to be important. He will address him in a manner befitting of a person who has nothing. And this is fitna. It is Allah that made you the deputies of earth and he raised some of you above others in status in order to try you in what he has given you. It's Allah's arrangement. If you're above other people, if you're richer, Allah arranged that for a reason. For what reason? In order to test you in what you have. And Allah has the ability to reverse the situation suddenly. Is it possible for a poor man to become rich instantly? It is possible. And is it possible for a rich man to become poor instantly? It is possible. Is it possible for a president, someone who's a president today, to end up in a refugee camp tomorrow as, as a refugee? Is, is that possible? May Allah protect all of us. But is that possible? It is possible. From leader of a country to a refugee in a refugee camp. Allah has the ability to do that. So the rich people are fit now to the poor people as well. How? When the poor people look at the rich people, they think, how can Allah give them so much and not give me anything? This is fitna. Your duty as a poor man is to have patience and to appreciate and be thankful for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. When you are content, you envy nothing when you're satisfied with what you have. I'll give you an example of food. When you eat, even if the food you ate is not good, 
Let's say you ate vegetables and some cheap food and you're full, right? You've eaten a lot of it and your stomach is full. And then you come across people eating chicken. You, because your stomach is full, even if it's chicken, you, you don't feel like eating because your stomach is already full. It doesn't matter what kind of food you ate. When you're full, you're full. The world is like that. What you have may not be too much, but if you're happy with it, if you are satisfied with it, when you look around at other things, you don't feel the need for them. The things which people consider to be expensive become so cheap to you because you don't need them. You know, only what you need is expensive. What you don't need is not expensive. For me, what I need, I consider to be expensive. But if it's something I don't need, well, to me, it's not expensive. For example, do you, do you need a spaceship? A spaceship to go to the moon and you, you need a spaceship? Do you ever look at a person who has a spaceship with envy and think, ah, I wish I also had a spaceship? Do you even think about it? No, because you don't need it. It's something you don't need. You only value the things which matter in your life. True or false? So what matters in your life? If there is food on the table, all right, for today, for this day, if you have something to eat, something to keep the life in you, and something to cover your body, and you are satisfied with that, you don't need all that. You don't need it. So this fitna has to be avoided. Everyone is a fitna to another person. Everyone is a fitna to another person. Your fellow businessman is fitna to you. When he's doing well, he creates fitna in you. You think, why? Why is it all coming to him and not to me? He is fitna. Allah said, fitna. And we created some of you to be fitna for other people. Are you going to have some patience? It's a question. Are you going to have some patience? And your Lord is able to see. Omar radiallahu anhu asked the companions of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam in that time he was the leader of the Muslims. He said, Who ever heard anything from the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam concerning fitna? Hudayfa ibn al Yaman radiallahu anhu said, O oh, Amir al Mu'mineen, I heard something from the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam concerning fitna. He said, What's the fitna? He said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, the fitna which is found in your money and the fitna which is found in your children can be expiated, can be cancelled through salah and fasting. He said, that's not the kind of fitna I'm asking about. Talking of which, obviously, as we said, fitna, our wives are our fitna, right? They are fitna and we are fitna to them. Our children are our fitna and we are also a fitna to, to, to them. He says, I'm not asking you about that. I'm asking about big fitna. The big fitna which the Messenger وسلم, spoke about. When people are going to kill each other. He said, you don't have to worry, Amirul Mu'mineen. Because that fitna will not happen in your time. He said, how so? He said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there is a great door between the fitna and my ummah. And that door is you, O Amir al Mu'minin. You that strong door between the fitna and the ummah. He said, tell me, is that door going to be opened? Will it be opened? He said, no, Ya Amir al Mu'minin, it can't be opened. It will be broken down. They will break it down. So he understood, radiallahu anhu, that he would be martyred. He would be killed. The only way fitna would enter the ummah is the death of Umar. They just have to kill him. Otherwise, Umar would not open the door for fitna. He is the great door that closes the fitna. 
And for sure, when he died, fitna started. Everyone was a fitna to another person. We need to watch out for this fitna. Another fitna, ba'dakum li ba'd, is the fitna of al-a'imma al-mudhillin. Bad imams. Bad imams who cause fitna among the people by making halal haram and haram halal. They surround a leader and they only say what the leader would like to hear. When he says, I, I want to fight and kill that group of people, very quickly they go around and make fatwa, uh, they are kufar. Uh, such people are kufar, so Amir al Mu'minin, please go ahead, uh, kill them. If he says, What do you think about uh, uh, riba? Interest. What do you think about it? Stop meandering, explaining it this way and that way until it becomes halal. No, no problem. You know, bank and this and that. These are imma al mudillin. These will cause fitna for the ummah. They are dangerous. They say what their leader wants to hear. They are his advisors. And when you see such people surrounding the Umar, then the entire Ummah is in great trouble. Fatwa is according to what the Amir thinks. Before you give the Fatwa, you think, what, what would the Amir like to hear? Ah, uh, if... Uh, if I do such and such, uh, I mean, just, just a bit of music and, you know, inviting some people, we dance a little bit, is that, uh, 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 is that haram? No, Amir al muminin That used to happen even in the time of the Sahaba, the Sallallahu Alaihi How can you say that about the Sahaba of the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Dancing, no, 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 dancing is, is allowed. In fact, there's, there's no proper dalil for uh, uh, music being haram in the, in the Quran. It's, it's all right, Amir uh, al-Mu'min. Go ahead, let's, let's do it. Everything becomes halal. And anything the Amir doesn't like becomes haram. This is fitna. If you look at the fitna of those before us, maybe it's lighter than our fitna. That fitna was visible. Everyone could see it. Are you a Muslim? Yes, I'm a Muslim. We're going to punish you for being a Muslim until, until you say, I'm no longer a Muslim. This is clear fitna, but fitna that can't be seen. Fitna that, that, that lurks in the background and you cannot see it. It's dangerous fitna and we are surrounded by fitna, but the problem is the majority of us, we don't know we are living in fitna. This is a time of fitna. Today is bad. Tomorrow will be worse. That's why I started the khutbah by saying, yesterday was better. Yesterday was better than today. Because yesterday is closer to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Today is farther from the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Tomorrow is not going to be better. Tomorrow is going to be worse. After tomorrow will even be worse. The next 10 years from now will be worse. It will be disaster. Holding on to your deen will be like, excuse me, will be like holding a piece of fire. Holding to your deen will be like holding on to a piece of fire. That's not an easy thing. ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه فهو أهل التقوى وأهل المغفرة. I need to mention that I'll, I'll follow this up inshallah ta'ala by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he keeps us alive next week by another number of fitna that the ummah is, is facing so that all of us can be aware and stay away from this fitna. الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما أمر وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله إرغاما لمن جحد به وكفر وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد رسول الله اللهم صل عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين 
قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من صلى علي صلاة واحدة صلى الله عليه بها عشرة اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم ارحم خلفائه الراشدين أبا بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي رضوان الله تعالى عنهم أجمعين إلى يوم الدين قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الله الله في أصحابي الله الله في أصحابي لا تتخذوهم غرضا من بعدي فمن أحبهم فبحبي أحبهم ومن أبغضهم فببغضي أبغضهم وخير الناس قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها زكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها يا رب العالمين عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله تعالى يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون قوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله